In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve percent strength calculations when you've been given the density or milli equivalents per milliliter of the solution and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Now if you need a more comprehensive tutorial on percent strength calculations or you simply want to see more solved examples on percent strength calculations then I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description and I'm going to link it in the cards as well. But let's get right to the question. This question says magnesium chloride is available in the hexahydrate form as an injectable solution that supplies 1.97 milli equivalents of magnesium ion per milliliter. What is the percent strength of magnesium chloride hexahydrate in this solution? So let's analyze the question quickly. Here we are supposed to find the percentage strength of the magnesium chloride hexahydrate in the solution. And we've been given some information and this milli equivalents of the magnesium ion per milliliter. So although this question is asking for percent strength, it assumes that one is going to use and apply knowledge for milli equivalence calculations. So if you need to remind yourself quickly on what milli equivalence calculations is, then I'm also going to put a link to a playlist in the description and I'll link it to the cards right here. But the approach here would be to make use of the milli equivalence calculations equation and then based on that, determine the milligrams per milliliter and then ultimately convert that to a percentage strength. So what that would look like is the equation, because this is on a concentration level, would be milli equivalents per milliliter being equal to milligrams per milliliter divided by molecular weight times the valence. So using this equation, the strategy is really to determine what the milligrams per milliliter actually is which implies that we need to know what the milli equivalence per milliliter is, we need to know the molecular weight, and we also need to know the valence. So let's start off by putting down the stoichiometric equation. So now when you talk about magnesium chloride hexahydrate, then you're actually talking about MgCl2 hexahydrate, so you have two, six molecules of water. Now if you put this in an aqueous environment, it's going to dissociate into the magnesium cation and two chloride anions. And so the way the valence works is your valence is going to be the absolute of either the charge on the cation or the charge on the anion. So we can either use the charge on the magnesium cation, which would be the absolute of positive 2, which is actually 2. Or you could also use the chloride anion, where you have 2 times negative 1, which gives you negative 2. The absolute of negative 2 is also 2. So the valence of the magnesium chloride hexahydrate compound is actually 2. Now the molecular weight of magnesium chloride hexahydrate is actually equal to 203.3 gram per mole and we already have the milli equivalence per milliliter to be 1.97 so we can now substitute all these values into the original equation now we just want to be careful to know that in this equation the molecular weight should actually be in milligrams per millimole and we can go ahead and actually do the conversion but what typically happens is you end up with the same numeric value only that your units change and that's because of the nature of the conversion but let's go through that so that we can understand how that looks like so you have 203.3 gram per mole one mole is actually a thousand millimoles and also one gram is a thousand milligrams so since we are using dimensional analysis the moles can cancel out and the grams can also cancel out and the thousand can also cancel out. So it's because you have a thousand in the numerator and the thousand denominator. That's why the numeric value stays the same. But then the units are now in milligrams per millimole. So we actually end up with 203.3 milligrams per millimole. So it's a useful trick. Just you take the numeric value and then change the units to milligrams per millimole because of how the conversion plays out. So let's go ahead and substitute the values into the equation. And we can start off with the 1.97. Now, the 1.97 is coming from the question itself where it says you have 1.97 milli equivalents of magnesium ion per milliliter. Now, although it's saying magnesium ion, because of how the stoichiometry of the equation actually looks, we can simply use the same equation for the magnesium chloride hexahydrate. Now, that's because you have one millimole of magnesium chloride hexahydrate giving you one millimole of magnesium cation. 
So even if you went through all the manipulation, you end up in a way that you still have to use this equation and will work for the magnesium chloride hexahydrate. Now, if you want me to show you how to verify that, you just put a question in the comment section and I'll do a separate video on how to verify what I'm saying. But for now, just simply use the equation as it's presented to determine the magnesium chloride hexahydrate. So that would imply then that we can still go ahead and use the 1.97 and that's going to be equal to milligrams per milliliter divided by the molecular weight. Now, the molecular weight is the 203.3. So you put 203.3 milligrams per millimole times the valence, which is given us 2. And we can go ahead and solve for the milligrams per milliliter. And so that would imply that you have milligrams per milliliter being equal to 1.97 times 203.3 divided by 2 and that's going to be equal to 200.25 milligrams per milliliter now because we want to express this as a percentage strength and percentage strength is given as the amount of grams in a hundred milliliters it's prudent at this point to convert the milligrams to grams and so we'll do a quick conversion we'll make use of the conversion factor a thousand milligrams gives us one gram so the milligrams cancel out and you are now in grams per ml and that is actually equal to 0 0.2 grams per milliliter so we can go ahead and do the next step and that would imply that we'll take the 0 0.2 grams in one milliliter and that's actually going to be equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters now the ratio on the right hand side of the equation is actually the definition of percentage strength but we can go ahead and solve for x and when we solve for x that will be the percentage strength so x is going to be equal to 0 0.2 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 1 milliliter and you end up with 20 percent weight by volume let's take a look at another question here the question says calculate the volume of the solution and also the percentage strength of 30 grams of barium chloride that is dissolved in 150 grams of water. The density of the solution is 1.09 gram per milliliter. So let's go ahead and analyze the question. The first goal here is to determine the volume of the solution. And so the way we will do that is to first find the total weight of the solution and then use the density that has been given to determine what the volume is. So let's go ahead and start off with that solution. So the total weight of the solution is going to be equal to the 30 grams from the barium chloride and the 150 grams from the water. Now that's going to be equal to 180 grams. And so we can recall that density is equal to mass over volume, which implies that volume is going to be equal to your mass over the density. So we can go ahead and put in the values or substitute the values. And here we are going to have 180 grams divided by 1.09 gram per milliliter. So the grams will cancel out and then the milliliter will flip to the numerator and that will be equal to 165.14 milliliters. So that's the total volume of the solution. Now the next part of the question is to calculate the percent strength. So we are going to make use of the information from the first solution, which is the volume, together with the amount in grams of the barium chloride to determine what the percent strength is. So what that would look like is we'll start off with the amount of barium chloride, which is your solute in this case, and that is 30 grams, divided by the total volume of the solution, which we just calculated to be 165.14 milliliters. And it's this ratio that we want to express as the percentage strength. So we set up a proportion and say that this ratio is equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters. So the ratio on the right hand side of the portion is actually the definition of percentage strength, weight and volume. So if you go ahead and solve for the unknown, which is X in this instance, then that value will be our percentage strength. So we go ahead and solve for X. X is going to be equal to 30 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 165.14 milliliters. And you end up with the percentage strength. So that implies that X is going to be equal to 18.17% weight by volume. 
Now, if you need more practice on percentage trend calculations, there's a whole host of solved examples on the channel. I'm going to put that link to a playlist in the description and I'll link it in the cards as well. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.